Making game mods canon material. New insights on white chlorination syndrome victims. A real world reference point for the city ruins and more. The final four episodes of Nier Automata Core 1 dropped a ton of new lore for fans to theorize about. By comparing the game and anime, we'll be going through the big changes, new additions, and subtle hints from episodes 9 through 12. 1 through 8 are a separate video, it'll be linked at the end. Let's dive in. <laughs> 9S gets captured by Adam and finds himself in this labyrinth. The hacking segments are once again translated into something slightly less abstract compared to the game. However, in contrast to previous times, we'll see the use of void spaces more often, which makes a lot of sense for where they're used. The conversation between these two is very similar to the game and ends the same way. <laughs> Tubi starts her search for 9S. In the game, we work towards this goal by getting Devola and Popola's help. We want to build a scanner to detect faint black box signals, which would eventually bring us to the copied city. The anime cuts that out and just has Pod 153 find Tubi and bring her to the last place 9S was seen. Adam left behind some coordinates, indicating the location of the copied city, which I guess has been canonically confirmed to be the near world equivalent of where the Square Enix Shinjuku office is in our world. We knew the game took place in Japan, and I think most people considered it could be around Shinjuku because of this. I don't know if Square Enix existed in the near world before that event, but we now have a precise real world point of reference for it. The city ruins are the ruins of Shinjuku. The copied city closely resembles the game until we get to the place where 2B would have met Adam. He's not there and 2B walks into a completely new room. Except it's not exactly new. The near Automata church mystery was a pretty big phenomenon in the near community. It all started with a reddit post left by user SadFutago in June 2022, asking about how they could open this door we see 2B walk into. He'd later follow up with a video of the area. This isn't actually in the game, you're not supposed to be able to access this area. Yosuke Saito, the producer of Nier Automata and Yoko's Haro, both retweeted videos of it. Naturally, the community wanted answers. They asked Taro to clarify if this was secretly added. He refused to comment. It might seem crazy that people would actually believe this wasn't a hoax, but the only reason it was believable was because Automata does stuff like this to begin with. Three years after the game was first released, a cheat code letting you skip the last ending was found. You had to press this sequence of buttons while standing between some barrels. It wasn't out of the realm of possibility that there might be something else we missed. We finally got the truth in July 2022. The church was a mod developed by these three, who decided to finally hold a Twitch stream and reveal it. And now, one year later, it officially exists in the lore. In this room, we see a bunch of statues Adam is probably in the process of making. Feel free to drop a comment with the ones I missed, but I think this is supposed to be the protagonist from Near Replicant. I think this is his sister Yona beside him. These two are Devila and Popola. This might be Emil, but he also looks like any generic boy. Since Kaine is missing, maybe the idea here was to represent all the people from Nier's village, in which case Emil wouldn't be here, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. What Pod says here is very interesting. These statues are made from calcium sulfide, sodium chloride, and a material that cannot be analyzed. The rest of the copied city is made from crystallized silicon and carbon, so this sticks out hard. Immediate thought is white chlorination syndrome. Quick crash course on what this is. Yoko Taro started the Drakengard series before the Nier series. They are connected. Ending E of Drakengard 1 is responsible for kicking off the Nier universe. In that ending, the protagonist Kaim, his pack partner Angelus, and the final boss, Queen Beast, appear in Tokyo. Nier lore refers to the Queen Beast as the giant, so I will too from now on. The boss fight happens right here and results in a win for Kaim and the dragon, but they're soon shot down by good old humans. Target neutralized. After the giant was defeated, it dissolves into a white substance called Maso. White chlorination syndrome is an airborne disease that originates from the substance. An infected individual will have their cells mutate, transmuting into sodium chloride. As it progresses, they eventually start to look like a white statue made entirely of salt, just like the giant. You can see where I'm going with this. One of two things eventually happened to the infected and it's actually a choice. Option 1, make a pact with a god from another dimension and become a monster-like servant. Option 2, die. The corpses of those who chose option 2 deteriorate into salt particles. The material that cannot be analyzed that was mentioned here is most likely Maso. I think Adam collected the remnants of those infected with white chlorination syndrome and was in the process of building some type of monument to maybe commemorate the event. It seems like something Adam might do just out of obsession with humanity. There's a replica of the library from Replicant in here too, and he sees androids as fascinating. Why not think of replicants the same way and make art of them too? Unless this is supposed to be the Shadow Lord. That might make more sense actually, I don't know. 
So this sculpture, I don't know what to make of it, but the head seems to be a 9S model. Is Adam trying to make one of these or something? Some kind of religious imagery? The library to be wandered into is present in the game, but it's in a different location. It does make sense to include it here though, along with the other works of art. The reveal that both aliens and humanity are dead happened at the same time. The anime had cut out the segment with the alien reveal earlier, and I went over the scenario in the first video if you want those details. Eve's death is very interesting, mostly because in the game, it's the other way around, and it happens under different circumstances. Adam is killed instead of Eve, who wasn't even around to witness it. So dark. <laughs> so cold. Tubi carries 9S off in both cases, but the anime gives us this cool juxtaposition with Adam holding Eve as he dies. There's a question you may have had from the segment of the game. How did Eve know Adam was dead? This is explained in the Nier novel, a long story short. Eve was waiting for Adam to come home, same as the anime. He promised Adam that he'd wait for him here, but it was taking too long. Eve eventually breaks his promise and rushes over to the copied city to find him. Remember, they're disconnected from the network now, so he doesn't know what's up. When Eve arrived, he just saw Adam's dead body lying on the ground. The anime shows us what could have happened if Eve made it in time. To end off the episode, I want to point out the puppet show bit. Hubi thinks this acorn shirt would suit 9S. This is a running joke from episode 3 where it is revealed that 9S keeps acorns in his pouch. He claimed that what he kept in there was a secret earlier in the episode. He Become as Eve was a clever mix-up of Become as Gods. As 9S undergoes repairs, Tubi investigates machine lifeforms that have been disconnected from the network. This happens in both game and anime, though we take Pascal with us in the game. This cult-like behavior of these machines is made a bit more apparent with them recruiting other members, but the scene where we come across the leader is the same. Once the fight begins, the machines are chanting Become as Eve in the anime instead of Become as Gods like in the game. This is good, but this is better. Once the fight begins, the machines are chanting Become as Eve in the anime instead of Become as Gods, like in the game. This group of machines is mimicking another aspect of humans associated with religion and cult-like behavior. The leader spread the idea that they could become gods by dying. An interesting spin was put on the idea in the anime. Adam accidentally started this whole thing when he kicked the head off the machine who was impersonating Eve. We can all become like Eve by dying. While this is happening, Adam has these black tattoos take shape over the right side of his body. Same thing happens to Eve in the game over the left side of his body. Makes perfect sense, they're two halves of a whole and are now missing 50% of themselves. These tattoos form the symbol of the Cult of the Watchers. As the name implies, they're a group from Drakengard that worships beings called Watchers, which were led by the giant. You might have suspected it, but the anime confirms that both Adam and Eve had these markings. The significance of this connection isn't yet known, but Adam commemorating the event in Tokyo is even more suspicious now. After rejecting the cult invitation, Tubi will come across a machine 9S hacked into in both mediums. Then we finally get to see another boss fight in the anime. Tubi then heads back to the resistance camp for the climax of Route A. This episode includes a special extended puppet segment with a lot of references to Nier Replicant. It starts with Popola casually singing these famous lines from the endgame. Then we see some of the most unique machine lifeform designs in the game. They probably won't appear in the anime. Popola mentions that she went to the desert to find a flower called a Desert Rose, which is a reference to the side quest, Popola's Errand. Devila shows up with alcohol made from the flower and talks about how some people meow when drunk, which is exactly what the Devila from Replicant does. The red girls are just in the background for some reason now. I guess that's what what they do, lurk. And then they get attacked and have to fend off a mob while 9S sleeps. A comically vague reference to you know what. <laughs> This episode's got a similar vibe to the game, but the way the battle goes down has been changed a lot. It's more about the android resistance collectively fighting back against the machines this time. In the game, it was more just 2B and 9S taking down some large enemies all around the city ruins while responding to distress calls. Then the anime introduces an entirely new concept called Process 11. I don't know what this means, but it seems to be the true goal of the Council of Humanity and will allow them to attain God. I think it's possible their goal is still the same as in the game, but this phrasing is throwing me off. Why introduce the concept of Process 11 in the first place if this was the case? The only other hint we have is the line, so I must repeat it all over again, which has me thinking of you know what. I'm being a bit vague for the anime onlys. Since Adam has swapped fates with Eve in the anime, he naturally replaces Eve's role as the final boss of the route as well. They both fight by manipulating the scraps of the machines left all around the city ruins. However, 
Their fighting styles are different. Adam does his art thing and creates a giant Eve, though that doesn't last and it becomes a near reincarnation reference. No idea what the connection here is. Adam comes to the same conclusion Eve had in the game, that life is meaningless if his brother doesn't exist. Then the fight begins. The whole resistance working together idea is once again emphasized as everyone executes their plan to take Adam down. I thought this was well done. All these four episodes have actually fleshed out many details. They also work the enhanced machines into the fight. In both mediums, 9S has the idea to hack into the enemy to allow the resistance to finish them off, though this visual of Adam's self-consciousness data wasn't in the game and was a nice touch. The collaborative effort ends with the Yorha commander joining in with a satellite laser attack. This puppet segment is weird, mostly because of this line. Some more foreshadowing, I guess. Oi, oi. Hi. Adam is killed, his last thoughts being his brother. 9S gets infected with a logic virus, and this goes pretty much the same as the game. 9S managed to put his consciousness into a nearby machine. The battle continues. We get a credit sequence that mimics the game too, which would be the end of Route A. The remainder of the episode is a segment from Route B during 9S's data overhaul. This is very one-to-one -to, -one to the point where I found it kind of comical, especially when 9S gets attacked here and the enemies are still those minigame ship things. That all changes with this scene. The red girls make their first official appearance, way earlier than in the game. What they say in the scene makes me think their goal still lines up with the game. I'm even more confused as to how Process 11 fits into this now. They've been watching 9S all this time in both game and anime. Here's them in Route B, just witnessing attempted murder. The anime then strongly implies that the Council of Humanity and the Red Girls are the same entity. 9S then sinks deeper into his subconsciousness with some kind of city in the background. This looks most like the Airy from Replicant to me, and I'm not sure how the Airy would relate to 9S specifically too. There's a voice speaking over 9S as he approaches his TV. It's narrating a picture book cutscene from the game called Together. The other voice also happens to be another 9S. This was an interesting dialogue choice. I think you're supposed to recontextualize this as 9S wanting to be freed from his long period of battles and adventures. Some part of him feels perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death, and he wants out. He just doesn't realize it yet. As 9S leaves, we get a scene flat out confirming the Council of Humanity and the Red Girls are the same entity. <laughs> A conclusion montage ends the episode. I wonder how the future is going to unfold from here on. One final thing I want to mention are the hex codes. These things you see on screen during transitions. They contain spoilers for future events in the game and anime. If you're an anime only, skip to this point. To translate the hex codes, convert them from hexadecimal to UTF-8, then translate the Japanese to whatever language of your choosing. I don't speak Japanese, so I used a couple different translators to try and get a general idea of what is being said. I'll also be cross-checking with a Reddit post from this user from the Nier community for a bit of validation, though they also use translators. I'll link them in the description if you want to take a look. The hex codes are generally reports summarizing observations about the androids and the machines. Whoever wrote these knows the history of perpetual war the two parties partake in, and seems seems to know a few things about future events too. The most likely candidate for reporting this information is Accord. This is a timeline traveling android originally from Drakengard 3, but she's continually been observing the near world as well. We don't know why she's doing it, but we know her job is to record real world events. She's actually the one who provides the weapon trader from the resistance camp to stock. That's why a lot of these weapons are from other games in the series. They come from whatever reality Accord gets them from. I'll also throw out the possibility that the reporter could be one of the pods, but it's far less likely. This is literally just off the fact that each report begins with the word report, which is kind of their thing. I'm only going to cover the ones I found most interesting here, but you can read all of the reports in that reddit post I mentioned before. Episode 1. Will the cycle of samsara bring salvation or disintegration? The word samsara originates from Pali and Sanskrit, signifying the constant and never-ending cycle of death and rebirth. The literal meaning of the word is wandering through or flowing on, clearly relevant to Automata's themes. The liberation from samsara has many terms, but the one you're most familiar familiar with is called Nirvana. This is not just liberation from samsara, but also liberation from suffering and pain. So the reporter themselves are questioning whether this cycle will bring about enlightenment or ruin. This is the same question we have by the end of the game. Nice way to start the series off. Episode 5. Remaining units of replicated magical weapons from the old world were found. This individual, who is nearing the end of his function, must be happy. This is in reference to Emil, who debuts in this episode. I guess this might confirm that Emil ceased all function by this point. If he's happy, I'm guessing he he has his memories and has finished his mission. No more pain and suffering. More information about Emil's role in the previous video. Episode 9. Despite the lack of interference, the attainment status of Adam and Eve's nine individuals is indeterminate. The remote factor of the divergence has now been requested to be investigated in the 12th round. There's a 12th round. Does that mean this is the 11th? 
Process 11. If you're able to investigate something about Adam and Eve in a future cycle, that would imply they need to be alive again, right? Are you trying to tell me this is a different cycle from the game, or an alternate timeline we've diverged into? Episode 11. The mutation situation in the vicinity of this branch is beginning to differ from the record. Continue to monitor the progress. And Episode 12. During the previous battle between mechanical lifeforms and androids, the predecessor disappeared. Investigate carefully, including the possibility of mutation to Group B. The anime is a diverged timeline of the game events? These are some sketchy translations, but the predecessor. Are we talking about aliens or a previous version of 2B or 9S? If it's the aliens, that's pretty early in the timeline. That's like before the 8th Machine War, right? Grun is a key player in that one, and he's dead in the distance back in episode 8. Thanks to the comments for pointing that out. That's something I missed last time. And finally, the trailer for Core 2. The record suggested the possibility of a singularity alternation. Could this be a breakthrough in the fight against machine life? There are two different types of singularities this could be referring to. The technological singularity is a point in the future where AI growth becomes uncontrollable. It would be an explosion in intelligence that results in machines that far surpass humans. Androids and machine lifeforms are pretty smart already in the near world, but maybe this is referring to some big evolution to grow closer to humanity that the Red Girls are looking for. Space-time or gravitational singularity is when we have a situation where gravity is so intense that it results in the catastrophic breakdown of space-time. Concepts like where and when no longer mean anything, and it is predicted that this occurs in black holes. What are your thoughts on this. And that's Core 1. Different enough that longtime fans of the franchise can still watch with interest and theorize about things. Coherent enough that anime onlys can understand it and aren't missing major pieces of information. This has exceeded what I expected. Looking forward to the rest of it. Check out part 1 if you haven't already. Did you know Yoko Taro made a puppet show as well? Video on that is on the screen now.